after the tragic 2012 Dana air crash in Lagos, the industry managers made frantic efforts to address loopholes in the system. These steps ushered in some improvements, but the situation was far from perfect. Years later, the results became visible in 2016 and 2017, with no commercial scheduled service accidents recorded in the country. But the events that occurred in February this year, however, showed that things have steadily deteriorated. Three incidents last month alone drew attention to the safety in the country's aviation sector. The case where the door of a commercial airplane taxiing down the runway after landing from Lagos to Abuja fell off, throwing the passengers into panic. Another passenger airline was prevented from landing as cows strayed into the runway of the Akure Airport in Ondo State. And tragedy was averted when yet another commercial aircraft flying from Abuja to Port Harcourt overshot the runway at Port Harcourt International Airport. Well, the Senate has stepped in in addressing these looming mishaps. The lawmakers summoned the aviation minister had the a, a, a Minister of State for Aviation Hadi Sereka, his team of aviation managers, to address these issues. Is there a quick fix to Nigeria's air safety challenges? And how much of this can be traced to human errors? I am Shegun Ojeladi. I'm being joined in the studio by an aviation expert, Mr. Godi. Okay. I welcome you to the program. Oh, thank you very much. Mm. Shiro. Now, my dear issue, viewers, welcome, please. Mm. The issue we have on hand um, is aviation safety yes. in Nigeria. From your point of view, do we have safety issues in Nigeria's aviation sector? Oh, yes. Today. Yes, we do. We do. As a matter of fact, it's not about today. It, this has gone on for so long. Uh, my first encounter with safety issues uh, was way back uh, 2010. As a matter of fact, that airplane that crashed and slaughtered about 153 people in, in Lagos, um, I happened to be on board precisely on the 14th of July, 2010, mm. nearly two years before it eventually fell off the skies. For the same reason that I raised alarm, uh, with my knowledge and, and, and experience with, um, <coughs> excuse me, airplanes, I, I saw something that I regarded as a taboo mm. going on. This airline had passengers, first of all, it was a three o'clock flight. I, I, I'll have to give you these graphic details mm. so that you will understand you know how far we've come sliding you know you know down the the lane now uh it was supposed to be a three o'clock flight on on that fateful day of 14th july 2010 that's correct and uh, uh, uh at three o'clock when mm. we were supposed to board the the plane was on the ground by the way and they announced that there was a, a one hour delay that we we're going to leave by four at four o'clock Yet another announcement came on that it would be for 5 p.m. We all sat there. At 5, no more word from anyone. Mm. At 6 o'clock, not a word from anyone. We were just sitting there like sitting ducks, you know, very helplessly. And then 7 p.m., an announcement came that we could now go on the board. And as usual, we, we all heaved sighs of uh, relief and uh, headed out to, to board. And that day we had an honorable, a serving honorable minister. As a matter of fact, I will mention his name because it's not, it's not any big deal about what, what went on because he came to me to ask why I took the steps I took that night. Uh, that was the then Foreign Affairs Minister, um, uh, Barrister Odian Ajimogobi, S-A-N. He was on board. Now, 
as soon as we all boarded, the doors were, were shut. And what did we have? Ten, almost 10 minutes of the engines not coming on. And then I happened to be sitting by, by the window. And then I looked out and noticed that, you know, some technical works were going on. On the plane? On, on, yes, on the engine. That was a taboo. You don't ever do anything like that when passengers were already seated. seated. Because anything could happen, there could be fire. Fire could erupt, and before you, you know, evacuate the plane, a, a, a couple of people would have been burned to death. And so, that alarmed me. Just as I called um, one of the air hostesses to query why that should be going on when we were already, you know, bothered. Of course, my fellow passengers didn't know or understand the technicalities of what was going on. And then uh, uh, she was just about to dismiss me with some explanation when the pilot himself, with thick American accent. I didn't quite pick up that young man's name, but I suspect it might have been this one that eventually lost his life, mm -hmm. you know, in the two, uh, June 3, um, 2012 uh, eventual crash. And then he came in to say, oh, so sorry, passengers, uh, we've delayed you for so long, but in a few minutes we'll be on our way, that he, ha he was having issues with starting the, uh, the engines from the cockpit. So there was a disconnect between the engines and the cockpit. That alarmed me because the, the meaning of that was that if we were airborne and for some either weather reasons or some technical reasons that any of those engines flamed out midair, he had no chance of, rest of, restarting. of restarting the engine. <laughs> and mind you, starting off a jet engine is not like your car where you sleep in your key, whine yes. and crank yes. your engine. No, it's a procedure. Okay. Yeah. So, so um, uh, by 2012, exactly two years after, they didn't resolve that problem that was causing that issue. So the plane came down. The plane came down. Mm. Now, uh, that's uh, about how many years after now? 17. Uh, that, that's correct. Now, are the issues still jamming? Are they still prevalent? Do you still see some of... I think we've moved on. Uh, but some of these things that happen lately may not as uh, been as grievous as the experience you just narrated. We've, uh, we've, we've moved up a little. Um, Infrastructure-wise, yes, but attitude, attitude, attitude hasn't changed. I want to tell you, Shego, airplanes are faithful machines. They are built so well that you have thousands of sensors monitoring every inch of the airplane. Before anything goes wrong, the airplane tells you as a pilot. And you make a decision what you want to do, whether you want to risk it or you, you, you want to turn it in for, for, for maintenance work. The reason airplanes fall out of the sky, is I, uh, that's what I insist on, is that human operators are mostly dishonest and unfaithful. Otherwise, the airplane machine, most of the equipment that you use there have redundance. If this one goes bad, you, you quickly switch to the other and continue doing what you're doing. And if, if anything is going to go bad, the plane informs you either by a buzz or by vo voice actuator or by um, you know, some you know, uh, you know, light, yes, light indicators. One way or the other, the airplane tells you what's, what's going on wrong. And if you come in in the morning, first thing in the morning as a pilot and you, you walk into your cockpit, it's known in aviation circles as, uh, you know, uh, coming in dark and cold, you know, in a state known as dark and cold. It's called dark because most of the modern airplanes come with glass cockpits. And when you, you know, shut them down, everywhere is dark. dark until you light them up again mm. and turn it on. And of course, uh, with the morning dew and the all night, you know, cold, you, you, and the cockpit being a small compartment, you get in there, it's, it's a little chilly. So that's why it's, it's described as dark and cold. Mm. If you come in, on your roof are knobs and buttons. Those are for scanning. Before you even start, you know, do your startup procedure, you, you, you have um, uh, an opportunity to scan yes. front, back, left, right. Okay. If any part of that airplane has issues, the plane tells the pilot right away. There is one incident of uh, the 
cockpit, I mean, just, I mean, the, 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 the door just coming off just like that while the plane was taxiing. Uh, that kind of situation uh, is unheard of in some climb. What that, must have gone that wrong? That is, it, it happens only in a, in a careless environment such as ours. Um, that must have been, I, I've, I've thought through it from what I know and assessed what could happen. First of all, the, the, way, the way those doors are mounted is such that they are pulled to the inside to throw them off mm. in, in, in times of emergency, emergency. all right? Mm. Now, what happened, why that door stayed on until the plane touched down is that up there in the skies, the, the cabin of the airplane is usually pressurized in order to sustain human life for, because the atmospheric pressure on Earth, this place we are, that God himself created and gave to us free of charge, that enables us to take our breath it's because of the atmospheric pressure that's existing around us. Now, as you soar into the sky, the, the atmospheric pressure thins out. It gets to a point that you don't even have any anymore. And so in order for human beings in the cabin to survive, the cabin is pressurized to give you a semblance of the way it is here on Earth, on Earth up there so that you can relax and be comfortable and, and breathe in and out in the in a normal fashion. So that's, that's that, why that, that's, that's so, Yeah, so with that pressure, what happens is it keeps those, you know, those dogs those. in place. Okay. Now, what could have happened would have been that some uh, technical individual that carried out some maintenance work didn't fix back that door properly. Well. And so, on... Getting down from the skies and touching, touching the ground, there was a switch. The atmospheric pressure now out there became higher than the one inside the cabin. In the cabin. And what did he do? Boom! He pushed it in. It's just as, for instance, if you're up in the air with that pressurized cabin and a hole is made in any part of the plane, either one of the doors fell off or however way, why will, it sucks you out. Why will cows be allowed on the wrong way? How that, do they get that? That is the most irresponsible thing that's ever happened in any airport in any, anywhere in the world. As a matter of fact, there was a time I got so upset about Stray not, animals. Not, noticing that, that was, this happened in Abuja here, noticing that you know cows were allowed into the airport premises and you know crisscrossing the parking area and headed out to a direction that i was so sure as egg and egg that they must have crossed one of the wrong ways no, to get into the uh, to get into the bush that also alarmed me I, I i thought it was unacceptable and as a skull we have it on that day i had a journalist in my company and so when i say this i challenge anyone that's listening and watching to go and verify i immediately took a trip to the NCAA you know, headquarters. First of all was that the security man uh, at the gate wouldn't let me through the gate. And I, I, I identified myself. I said, listen, I, I, I work with, you know, on aviation issues. I have a TV show that I sponsor, um, Anchor. And uh, it's all for the benefit of uh, Nigeria and Nigerians and all those living in Nigeria to know what they should know about aviation. It was a big argument for over 20 minutes before they let me through the, into the gate. Mm. Because I insisted, this is a public office, you mm. must let me in. Mm. I want to go and see the chief executive because I have something bothering Did you me. They, I didn't. Okay. I got in there, I got in there, I was told, after they delayed me for over 20 yes, minutes at the that. gate, that he was at the airport carrying out inspections okay. and now I left my name, mm. my number and begged to be contacted. I had something very important to the organization okay. but up until this day, Shego, not mm. a word from anyone. Okay. Now, uh, this uh, uh, three issues that occurred in, in the month of February, yeah. we've only touched two, the door that came, I mean, that, 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 that was open. It's just carelessness and then of, uh, the cow, some technical um, device. There is again the train trying to uh, uh, touch, uh, I mean, uh, touch the ground and then it skidded off uh, the runway. Now, the Senate has intervened and uh, from their, this, uh, their deliberations summoned uh, uh, the uh, Minister of State for Aviation and other stakeholders in that sector. Let's just take a 
a short uh, uh, preview of uh, what transpired on the floor of the Senate on Tuesday. It has now become imperative to move with speed and alacrity in order to ensure that all relevant agencies in the aviation industry do their work with excellence. We must give confidence to our citizens with respect to really using aviation to go about doing their business. They can't, within two weeks, you have two near misses. I think it's worrisome and it's something we really need to look into seriously. So it is important for us to ensure that this matter is sorted out and then that the regulatory agencies do their work, you know, because um, once anything happens, there's nothing you can do to reverse it. Senate of the Federal Republic there intervening in the uh, safety issues in Nigeria's aviation sector. We have not had the last of it as uh, the Minister of State for Aviation and some other stakeholders in the industry have been summoned by the Senate. We shall keep you posted on uh, developments. Now, uh, Godi, le let's look at the intervention of the, of, the, of the Senate. It's quite responsive. What do you think? I must tell you, Shego, without missing words, and with absolute respect for the gentlemen and women, the distinguished gentlemen and women on uh, the Senate, um, the experience I had when uh, the Dana air crash was mm, being good. investigated, mm. on the, I was invited mm. because um, as far as uh, I don't know how they got the information about how I tried to stop that flight mm. two years earlier before mm. it eventually crashed. And then I attended. I attended all the sessions, mm. um, uh, and then um, when it was my turn to speak, I made graphic presentation of my experience with the airline, and I cross-examined the individuals who re represented the, the, the airline on the day. Every allegation I made, they admitted on the floor of the Senate. I've got the records right on this iPad. I, mm. could, I could give you a copy and you go mm. and listen and hear what, what I said to, to them and uh, all the questions I asked and mm. all the answers I got. Mm. As a matter of fact, uh, Chegu, just by the way, mm. I'm doing a book on it that will be launched very soon. Okay. Very okay. soon. Mm. Uh -huh. So, um, so the Senate uh, so, is doing so the, the, some work the, there. Yeah, the, the Senate got every information. It was graphic. Every information they needed from all the airlines. Mm. I remember them walking up to the then, uh, you know, um, chairman, chairman of, of the, of the uh, committee, uh, committee on time. aviation at the mm. time, mm. and uh, he happened to be Senator Hope Uzodima. Uh, well, Hope Uzodima, mm. and in order to bring it down to earth and really get to understand how, she, I spoke to him in vernacular, and I said to him, "This is one accident too many." We can't let this go on. Somebody must be held responsible mm. and somebody must be punished okay. and be seen to have been punished. Mm. And he assured me and said, be sure we are serious. We, we are doing everything that, uh, that can be done. Yeah. And I want to ask you, Shego, what do you know about the, that report t of today? The, of the committee. Yes. What do you know about the report? Was there anyone that was sanctioned? Was there anyone that was known and seen to have been punished for no. all that went wrong? Mm. Now, the human nature is such that if you do not show that laws have teeth, yes. can bite, yes. are willing to bite, mm. and we bite mm. when they catch you doing the wrong things, no one gets serious. Yes, I agree with you. Now, um, let's look at, will you say that there is a looming danger from some of the things that have happened in recent past in the aviation? Is there a looming danger? Are we going, do you see a situation where we're going, we're reversing some of the gains we recorded uh, earlier. Definitely on the issue of safety, we are on reverse gear. On the, on the issue of safety, we are on reverse gear. What, definitely. what has gone wrong? Uh, I, I think those that should ensure that maintenance is carried out and rules are kept. Now, aviation is about safety, safety and safety. Nothing in between. Mm. If you are challenged for one second by anything that will compromise safety, mm. you drop that, you stop that flight. Mm. 
that is aviation for you. But we are in, in, in a society where perhaps an inspector will walk into the airplane, check out the logs of the, of the, of the pilots, find that you know, something is really you know, not um, the way it should be. Rather than put his feet down to say, stop this flight. I'm not going to prove that you leave this airport. Somehow, they allowed it. They, they allow it to go. So, so if you go on allowing people to to go on with such so, activities, mm. the, the the tendency is that they will no why take one after the other. Yes. Why not apportioning blame now? Who do you blame? Do you blame the do you blame the operators? Do you blame the, the regulators? regulators? Or even, is it the government? They are, everyone has its own share of. What's blame. going wrong? Mm. The operators have their own share. They have their challenges, admittedly. Admittedly, the operators have their own I mean, challenges. And I can tell you straight away what, what it is. Um, the exchange rate of, uh, of, of Naira to no. dollar has made it you know, uh, very expensive to maintain and the airplane. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have the you know, well-equipped hangars here mm. to deal with some of the maintenance, maintenance uh, issues. issues. So they must be taken abroad, mm. pay, uh, for, money paid in, in, in exchange. Checks. And then, uh, if you also want to match the, the cost of maintenance with the you know, volume of money needed to, to do all this, then you and I will not be able to, to, to fly. To fly mm. because it, it mm. will mean that a trip from Abuja to Lagos might be about a hundred thousand naira one way. No, you know, because of our time, yes. what yes. must we do uh, in, in, in the short term? That, what must we do to avoid this looming danger that you have? Uh, you have predicted? Um, I, I have uh, severally cancelled that the government must bring all these airlines together, consolidate them. This, this, this is something that, um, you know, very uh, big accounting firms that's, that know how to consolidate accounts can, can, can deal with, create the necessary books, have them have, as one large airline supervised by the government of the day mm. through, through consultants. They may not just be only local consultants. They, you, you can mix them up, you know, with people who have operated in other climates where discipline is a watchword, so that our own people can also learn, you know, uh, the ropes by doing things the way it, they, are, they are expected to be done internationally, you know. So by, by so setting up, it will become um, possible for government to inject funds, funds into the system and then ensure that the you know there's no room for people to fritter away money like we saw in the days of uh, you know Air Nigeria it was one of the airlines that was uh, investigated by the Senate on the floor of the Senate I remember that mm. particular fateful day mm. when the chief executive walked in you know raving mm. until mm. until he was cautioned by the okay. chairman okay. of the committee okay. yeah and so um, uh, we had all sorts of ugly ugly things that took place how you know airlines were raking money mm. and then some individuals mm. we you know the, move the, the money away from yes. from the accounts of the mm. airline for other private businesses mm. Mm. and no. then there will not be you, any money you are to blaming maintain. it you are blame it on funding alone but again there is the technical know-how do we have the tech the, the requisite uh, technical knowledge to uh, maintain or run the aviation sector in nigeria um so far so good i must tell you that we have a lot of very intelligent nigerians out there okay um wh why i say that is that uh, if you go through the history of uh, nigeria airways for mm. instance it used to be said that nigeria airways pilots were the best in the world mm. That was the kind of Nigeria Airways we had. And uh, it didn't stop the airline from going down. Mm. If you go to my blog, you will also be able to, to read about the rise so and fall, not the only... rise and fall of Nigeria Airways. Mm. So it's not only you know, about, about funding. Mm. Um, we, must, we must continue to train and retrain you know, operators. In one or two sentences, yes. do you see us getting out of the situation? One or two sentences. We, we can only get out of the situation if the government sits up, sets up an appropriate committee of serious-minded individuals and 
attend to the sector okay. and deal decisively with all the issues, issues that are at stake. Okay. We, we can't handle them with kid gloves and solve the problem. Okay. We're only waiting for another slot about God forbid it. God forbid it. Now, this is where we call it a date on the program Nigeria Today. We've been taking a look at safety issues in Nigeria's aviation sector. I must thank you, uh, Mr. Godi Ike. An aviation expert for all that you've said on the program. All right, thank you. Thank you thank very you, much. Shagel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Until we come your way with yet another edition of the program, that will be tomorrow. Do join us then. Bye bye. Again, I can still.